Hello, Wisconsin. It's Mike Gallagher. And today I want to talk about proxy voting. Proxy voting. What, what is proxy voting, you might ask? Well, proxy voting in the last Congress uh, in May uh, of 2020, the Democrats passed a rule that allowed for proxy voting, which essentially allows one member of Congress to designate another member to vote on their behalf. They have to give uh, a signed letter to the House clerk that specifies which member they're authorizing to vote and how they want that member to vote. Um, this was done presumably to protect certain members who might have been in a higher risk category due to coronavirus, whether they were older or had a pre-existing condition, allowed so that they wouldn't have to travel to Washington, D.C., wouldn't have to interact with other members of Congress on the House floor and thereby protect themselves from getting uh, infected. At the time, notwithstanding that, I thought it was a very bad idea for Congress to pass a proxy voting proposal. There are ways we could have minimized the health risk without um, allowing Congress to do digital distance work. Um, it undid centuries of precedent and allowed the Speaker to pass legislation with less than 25 out of 435 members present. In other words, approximately 5% of the members of Congress uh, could dictate everything else if they did it the right way. And I also thought it was absurd that at the time, a lot of states were making these difficult decisions about who is an essential worker and who is a non-essential worker. Congress was effectively, proactively declaring itself to be non-essential. And also this was a continuation of decades of degrading the institution of Congress, whereby it has become a platform for C-list celebrities to get on TV and now increase their Twitter followers and their Instagram likes or this or that or whatever the kids are doing nowadays with their TikToks. Don't be on TikTok, kids. Um, but it exacerbated all the worst uh, traits of a Congress that was increasingly non-essential from a constitutional perspective. And I thought proxy voting was unconstitutional. And indeed, Republicans, uh, we filed a lawsuit uh, alleging that it's unconstitutional. And in general, the Republican position in the last Congress and in this Congress has been to oppose proxy voting. If you dig into the numbers uh, in the last Congress, 186 members of the House uh, named a proxy at least once. Of those, 179 uh, are Democrats. So that was 75 percent of the Democratic caucus designated a proxy uh, for at least part of the session. In contrast, only seven Republicans named proxies. Most of those were members that were leaving Congress, if you look at the actual names. Now, what's interesting is that in this Congress, uh, after January 6, we've seen more Republicans, including those who previously opposed proxy voting, now use proxy voting. Uh, and in some cases, they've actually had to have their names taken off of the lawsuit against proxy voting in order to be able to proxy vote themselves. Now, you could you could say, well, maybe they had good reason to do so, or maybe the Democrats that are still proxy voting had good reason to do so. But here's what's interesting. Uh, two things that I think illustrate that proxy voting is a sham. One, uh, infection rates have stabilized and in many states have fallen. At the same time, proxy voting has increased. So there's no correlation. In fact, there's a reverse correlation between the use of proxy voting and the threat posed by coronavirus. Two, at the same time, most members of Congress have already been vaccinated. So presumably they would be at less threat from coronavirus. And third, and I think this is what is damning for the case uh, in favor of proxy voting, is if you actually look at the proxy voting numbers, you see an increase in its use on fly-in or fly-out days. In other words, uh, on the days when members of Congress are anxious uh, to not be there, right? Particularly on the fly-out days where they want to go home so they can go to a fundraising event or they can, I don't know, uh, work on their, you know, you know, ship in a bottle collection, whatever, uh, or golf, uh, uh, th there's an increase in proxy voting which means people are abusing proxy voting and inching further to uh, their preferred outcome, which is that they never actually have to do the unglamorous work that is the bread and butter of Congress, right? Legislating, you know, uh, looking to conduct effective oversight of the executive branch, which is another thing we have now, uh, uh, we're now starting to do these committee work weeks where it used to be you do your committee hearings when you're in session in DC. Now we're doing them when we're at home and we're doing them virtually. And if you watch any of these committee hearings, 
they're a joke. I mean, most members of Congress can't even mute their microphones. They're clearly distracted throughout the whole thing. Prior to proxy voting and Congress doing digital work, we already had a problem where members were parachuting into their committee hearings, reading whatever script their staff had wrote for them in order to get a viral video or you know get on, on cable news or whatever and not actually asking intelligent questions. Well, now that problem's gotten worse because they can just sit uh, at home, you know, they can toggle between doing a virtual fundraiser and beaming into their committee hearing. So all of this just exacerbates the the worst uh, trends within Congress, which is an increasingly non-essential institution from a constitutional perspective. And now we're seeing some arguments, including from some Republicans, that says, no, this is actually better. We're using technology and it allows us to be at home in our districts more and stay more accountable to to our people. I totally disagree with that. I totally disagree with that. Uh, it, it, it is, in fact, I, I would venture to say that the time uh, spent uh, away from Washington, D.C. is time spent fundraising or building your social media profile and all the extraneous stuff that has consumed too much of uh, the time of members of Congress and is robbing the time necessary to do oversight and conduct legislation. So how do we get out of this mess? Well, one, let's end proxy voting immediately. We no longer need to proxy vote, especially since most members of Congress have been vaccinated. End proxy voting. Similarly, let's end this committee work week nonsense. Virtual committee hearings are a joke. Virtual presence is actual absence. I know that post-pandemic, there's going to be a lot of businesses that allow for hybrid work schedules and work from home. And Wisconsin's in a great position to benefit from that. But that's not the way Congress work. You're, is, there is value to being physically present. And part of the reason Congress has become such a joke of an institution is because members don't even show up and don't spend their time doing the work of Congress. They spend all that time raising money for reelection. And this is making that work worse. So let's get rid of the virtual committee hearings and get back to in person work. It is necessary for a legislative institution like Congress. And the third thing, and perhaps most important, and something I've been talking about for four years, is this schedule where Congress barely works even prior to the pandemic and flies in on a Tuesday night and flies out on a Thursday morning. It needs to be changed. It's an incredible waste of time and money. So a simple schedule where they kept us in session for three weeks contiguously and then allowed for 10 days back in the district would be far more productive. You get far more valuable time with your constituents back home. You could do all the political stuff you want to do, and it would force members of Congress to actually get to know each other and form human connections in Washington, D.C., which are a necessary precondition in order to get anything done legislatively. Change the schedule. Heck, I'd even accept two weeks contiguously, six-day work weeks. Imagine that, Congress. you got to pull in, put in a full week of work, one day off on Sunday to go to church, and then two weeks back home in the district. That would be way better, way more productive. If we don't do this, if we continue, I, I just worry that we're, going, we're on a path to permanent proxy voting, a permanent virtual Congress, and I may sound like a Luddite, and I'm one of the younger members of Congress, that's a bad idea. That is a bad idea. It degrades the core function of Congress, and ultimately, it will make Congress less essential than it already is, if you can believe that. An already feckless institution, even more feckless. When the fundamental thing we need to do it's almost the thing we need to do before any other policy disagreement is resolved is find a way to revive the institution of Congress and and force Article One, the legislative branch, to reassert its rightful role as the dominant branch of American government that is most accountable to the people. And we are becoming less accountable with proxy voting and digital work week. Uh, works digital work weeks than we were before. So sorry for the rant. Uh, I'm sure that, you know, uh, a lot of you tuned out within the first minute, but I've just watched this happen over the last few months. And this may be the most important thing happening that is going almost completely unnoticed. You don't want Congress on digital autopilot because that allows like five people in each party's 
to control everything that happens. That's what produces a massive 5,000 page omnibus bill at the end of the year that nobody reads. And you know, the other 11 months of the year are kabuki theater. This is what allows that to happen when members aren't doing the basic blocking and tackling of showing up, engaging in debate in committees, not fake debate for for the television, you know, cable news stars, um, and actually reading the bills before they vote on them. So that is why proxy voting is a bad idea. You should not surrender this voting card that you've entrusted with by 750,000 people for two years to anybody. And I used to mean that in a metaphorical sense of not allowing anyone to exert undue influence on your vote. Now I kind of mean it in an almost literal sense. Like don't give it away to another member to vote on your behalf. Friends don't let friends vote for them on the House of Representatives, in the House of Representatives, on the floor. Thus endeth my rant.